Welcome back, friends, to more Lord of the Rings Online. This is the Harvest Festival of 2018, and in the last episode, I did the Bingo Boffin quest here. A frightful tale to curl the hairs on your toe. That is the part of the quest that was released last year, and I redid it in the last episode just because of some technical issues from the previous year. But anyways, this year released part two of the quest, The Curse of Eerie Acres. So I'm very excited about this because ever since last year when I did this part one, I've been wondering where this is all headed. So we're going to get a little bit more information this time around. Let's go ahead and take a look. So of course it is recommended that you do part one first before you do this. And I just did that in the last episode. So here we go. Where has that time gone, Kippen? It feels as if we were just discussing the strange apparition you saw in Bidbowl Wood, but the year of which it spoke has already come and gone. I fully intend to spend the time researching the Phantom's words, but each day was too full of chores and errands and visits. And don't you know it. We are here again and no closer to solving the mystery. What did the apparition say? Ah, here it is. I wrote it down. There can be no reparation for the hurt that has been done. In one year, all will fear the parting of the wood. None will escape the curse of the eerie acres. Despair and repair to your holes, for none but one will have a laugh when all is done. Burr gives me the chills. Well, we will not forget those words, and I recommend that you keep your eyes open as we participate in the Harvest Festival this year. If you see anything that seems at all related to the curse, come see me at once. While Rick Goldworthy has opened a new field of festival games for the Harvest Festival this year at a place called Wismead. I have seen nothing to indicate that he knows anything about that apparition or this worrisome curse, so we should go to Wismead and have some fun, but I will keep on the lookout for anything suspicious, and you should as well. There's a pony to Wismead just east and up the slope. I'll meet you there, and hopefully Wismead will have plenty of spooky fun for a very and very little in a way of scary curses. So Wismead is a new location that was released this year for the Harvest Festival, and there are some other quests there unrelated to Bingo as well, which I haven't done. I've literally never been there before, so this is all going to be new to me. I'm pretty excited. This is a very spooky place, indeed. Let me see where it is on the map. It's just a isolated instance. Who, me? Oh, I'm not frightened. Mr. Goldworthy has put together quite a spooky place here. It is indeed, isn't it? Burr, spooky. Bingo waves you near, but he is clearly suspicious of this place. Are you having a good time? I certainly am. I must say, Wallerick Goldworthy has done quite a nice job of creating a spooky atmosphere for the Harvest Festival here at Wistmead. This is where we should have told our scary stories in the first place, Kippen. Can you imagine what Dinodus might have done if we tried scaring him here instead? Even the least frightening story might have been more convincing when we told it in this atmosphere. I encourage you to find my various cousins, the lot of them once removed, and see what they can think of the games here in Wistmead. But do not forget to remain alert for any suspicious activities. There may be an apparition on hand, seeking to conduct some nefarious purpose, and if the curse of this is real, we want to know about it in time to prevent it from being carried out. Even so, try to have some fun anyway, Kibben. It would be a shame to spoil all of Mr. Goldworthy's work with the excuse of a cautious and worry. Wismead really does seem like a fitting location for spooky fun after all. I saw Angelica make a beeline for the ponies to the northwest, and Berlack mentioned something about taking a snooze near the maze. Find them first and see what they think of Wismead. Alright. Very interesting indeed. I'm here to help. Don't be scared to ask. Ha ha ha. Alright, let me let's get a little bit of info then. Well never mind. I thought maybe she'll give us a generalized overview of the place. So I am going to not do any of the other quests. I'm going to strictly focus on the Bingo Boffin quests for right now, and then I'll be back to do the other ones in a while. <laughs> Hello there, Kippen. Will you look at these beautiful ponies? Aren't they simply delightful? I understand that Carl Proudfoot has loaned them out to Wallerick Goldworthy for the duration of the Harvest Festival and they seem to have been painted with these frightening but adorable designs. If I did not love horses and ponies as much as I do, I might be quite chilled to see them, but I do and I am not. 
I'm having a lovely time here in Wistmead, and everything scary I have seen seems to be on purpose, Kippen. Cousin Bingo's curse must have nothing to do with this place after all, and he is likely worry worrying for nothing. I will stay here with the ponies. Everything seems fine to me. Okay. Look at the line of hobbits waiting to get into the maze. Now, I don't have a map of the maze with me, so I'm going to be completely lost in there. Well, this is not the quest that I want. There he is. Oh, it's you, Kippen. I came with my brothers and sisters to Wistmead, but I am quite ready to leave. I was promised Harvest Festival fun, but this does not seem terribly enjoyable to me. All I want to do is curl up here on the outside of this maze and take a restful nap, but I have not been able to get comfortable. There's just something about this place that keeps me awake, and that is most unusual. Why, I would say it's a first. I will keep trying. Are my siblings having a better time than I am? I hope so, but above all, I just wish I could take a nap. This is usually not a problem. So now I have to talk to Camellia. Wallerick asked me to come per help him prepare Wismead. It was a lot of work. Welcome to Wismead, Kippen. I spoke with Wallerick Goldworthy earlier, and he told me that it took quite a long time to clear this field and prepare for the new Harvest Festival activities. I'm very glad he took the time because the spooky atmosphere here cannot be matched by anywhere in the Shire and everyone is having a wonderful time. Naturally, I was asked if I was if there was anything that still needed to be done and it turns out there are some baked goods still waiting to be set out on these tables. Could you go pick up one of Holly's spies from the tents on the other side of the field? Camellia lowers her voice conspiratorially. I must warn you about something, Kippen. The pie filling has been fashioned with blackberries and courants and should be delicious. But Holly Hornblower has made it to look like the pies are filled with creepy crawlies and spiders. A number of hungry hobbits may try to get in your way, but give them a good look at the pie and they will surely leave you alone. Okay. Carry this all the way back here. Camellia thanks you for the pie, but Griffo eyes it with distaste. I thought Wismead was going to be full of fun activities and delicious food, Kippen, but it seems I was mistaken. I wanted nothing more than to dig into one of these pies because the pie crust is golden brown the way I like it, and the smell makes my mouth water. But on closer inspection, you can plainly see that these pies are filled with spiders. It is an affront to a good taste. I do not understand why folks still buy pies from Holly Hornblower, honestly. I am not enjoying my time in Wismead, Kippen. I'm just so hungry, and I do not like that feeling. If you want to find someone who is having a good time, perhaps you should find Marigold. I expect she is enjoying herself because it is dark and a little scary. I saw her looking out in the misty woods on the other side of the field, and she might still be there. I'll try to rummage up some edible food. Wish me luck, because I am not eating one of those spider pies, no matter how delicious it might smell. Can't fool me. Holly Hornblower, of course. We delivered all her pies back in the Shire. There's like a cemetery over here. No mini map, but I am looking for. Let me set this on the tracker, I guess. Marigold Boffin, that's what I'm looking for. Not really seeing her anywhere. Marigold Boffin stands by the fog and shrouded path on the edge of Wistmead. Ah, Kippen, how are you finding Wistmead? I am not especially interested in the Harvest Festival activities that Wallerick Goldworthy has set up here, but I am very curious to know where his path leads. The fog hangs thickly all about the trail and the darkness seems almost to pool among the trees. It feels like an adventure to me. Cousin Bingo made me promise to stay in Wistmead, or he will tell my mother and she would be very cross. So for now I should not follow this misty path, but you made, s you made no such promise, did you? You should walk along the path and see where it leads, and then come back and tell me what you saw. 
That is a capital idea, is it not? I'll be waiting for your report, my friend. Okay. You walk along the path for a time, but the fog is very thick, and you may have gotten turned around. Let me get off my pony. I think it may be a little bit better. Certainly looks like I am on the outskirts here. Okay, so basically I kind of went around. Let me get back on my pony. Kippen, how did you get back here without my seeing you? You got turned around in the woods? This must not be ordinary fog after all, but a magical and mysterious mist that lends itself to confusing even the most perceptive of adventurers. How delightful. I will do some thinking and see if I can come up with some means of countering this, suspicious, this curious canopy of cloud. For now, you should return to Bingo and tell him that I am having a great time. Spooky mysteries abound. I'll be exploring this area in much more detail in a subsequent episode, by the way. I'm just focusing on the bingo quests. The longer we stay here, the more worried I become, Kippen. How do my cousins feel about Wismead? You tell Bingo that Angelica, Camellia, and Marigold seem to be enjoying themselves for various reasons, but the Berylak and Griffo do not seem to be having as fine a time. At least some of my cousins are enjoying the Harvest Festival here, even if that cannot be said for all of them. I suppose this cannot be curse at work. Unless it is a curse that has chosen to mildly inconvenience a few hobbits, which seems unlike any curse of which I've heard. Curse or no, I still wish of my cousins were more of my cousins were having a good time. All right, let's continue. Perhaps I am making a great mountain from the Shrewsboro Kippen, but that apparition you saw in Bidbowl Wood has me all a flutter with worry. What if the curse of which it spoke is just around the corner, and if it waits to a level, and it waits to level its full effect upon the hobbits celebrating the harvest festival here in Wistmead? Do you think it might speak with Wallerick Goldworthy in front of the maze and ask him if he has encountered any difficulties while setting up the festivities here? I hope I am just being silly. I will not be able to enjoy the games here at Wistmead until I set my mind at ease, and right now it's all a bustle with spooks and scary shenanigans, but not in a good way. So here is the guy responsible for setting all this up, Mr. Wallerick Goldworthy. Kind of looks like a little creeper, a little bit. Yes, what do you want? If you're here to complain, I do not want to hear it. I have listened to more than my share of grumbles today and my temper is at its lowest ebb. Move along, you. You try to set Wallerick at ease by telling him of the several hobbits with whom you have spoken seem to be thoroughly enjoying the festival at Wismead and he softens somewhat. When he seems less annoyed, you ask him about the process by which Wismead was ready for the activities and games of the Harvest Festival. Ah yes, well, it was quite a lot of work, so I am pleased that there are some who have enjoyed the games here. I put together a team from Hobbiton and Bywater, and for a better part of the fortnight, we worked to clear the field of stones and stumps. We had to move a few fences. Hobbits might have once lived among the trees here because we also moved one or two low walls that could have belonged to Hobbit homes although the houses themselves are long gone. If you want to see how much work we put in, you can take a look at the junk pile where we moved everything. It is to the southwest across the main path that runs through Wistmead. And enjoy yourself. I would not have put so much work into this place if I did not love this spooky season so much. Interesting music here as well, I would say. Face down wooden sign among the debris catches your eye. You turn over the sign revealing words that chill you to the bone. Eerie acres, just like the curse had mentioned. Clearly acres is carved on the sign, but it is crossed out and eerie acres is scrawled instead.
Not sure Bingo Boffin is going to be very happy about this. We'll see what he says, though. You look as if, you, as if you've seen a ghost, Kippen. Another one, I mean. You haven't, have you? You tell Bingo that Wallerick Goldworthy cleared away several fences, stones, and wooden structures when he prepared the field of Wispmead for the Harvest Festival, removing the debris to a junk pile. You go on to describe the wooden sign you found among the trash. What's that? You say that there was a sign from Cleary's Acre, but someone had crossed out and painted the words Eerie Acres on top? But that means... It's just as I feared, Kippen. This field may be called Wispmead now. But at some point in its history, it must have been called Geary Acres. We have wandered right into the waiting jaws of the curse. You have to tell Wallerick that we may be in danger. He has to cancel the celebrations here and at once. Cancel the Harvest Festival? Absolutely not. Why would I do that? You tell Wallerick Goldworthy of the malevolent force that has declared that no one in the Shire will escape the curse of the Eerie Acres, and you have found proof that Wismead was once known by that name. He snorts with disbelief. What nonsense. I know the sign of which you speak. It stood by the western path out of the clearing, and has not been thought of by anyone for a very long time. No one objected when we pulled it from the ground and tossed it aside, did they? This whole place has been uninhabited for dozens of years at least, Kippen, and no hobbit have called this place Eerie Acres since then. Take my word on it. I am sorry that you are bothered by all this talk of curses, but I am sure it is nothing. Someone is playing a holiday prank on you, I wager. I will not shut down Wismead, and I will not cancel the Harvest Festival. If that Bingo Boffin puts you up to this, you can just go tell him his plan to ruin my festival has failed. And that is all I will say about it. He refused to cancel the festival, didn't he? Of course he did. That is just the sort of day that I'm having. Why, I saw Fosco just now, and I told him we should probably get ready to leave Wismead. And do you know what he did? He yelled at me and stamped his feet. He has always been one of my favorite cousins, but he raised his voice at me and put me right out of sorts. Something is not right. This is quite unlike Fos- Excuse me, unlike Fosco, and I think the curse may be to blame. What's going on here, Kippen? Mark my words, there is more to this than we know. The Curse of Eerie Acres is real, and it has affected some of the hobbits here already. There can be no mistaking it. We have to get to the bottom of this business, Kippen, and find a way to combat the curse before it becomes too late. What we need is a clue, or better yet, more than one. Mingo snaps his fingers. Maybe we have one. You said that the writing on the sign you found had been crossed out with red paint and someone had written Eerie Acres. What words did this mysterious vandal seek to replace? Cleary's Acre, you said? Well, that is one place to start. We need to find anything that we can about a hobbit named Cleary. And perhaps we will learn what happened to his homestead for it to become known as Eerie Acres. It may be a long shot, but there might be some record of Cleary's Acre at the town hall in Mickle Delving. Consult Mayor Whitfoot and you might learn something useful. I will stay here and keep an eye on anything suspicious. Good luck to both of us, Kippen. All right, so thankfully I can swift travel there to Mikkel Delving. I'll do just that. Got a fellow kinsman here. So actually, before I speak with the mayor, I forgot to do something. I should have equipped my stone of the tortoise, because I always do that for... For festivals. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Okay. And... Let me go ahead and equip it real quick. Ah, uh, where did it go to? I guess I can type it here. There it is. Perfect. Okay. Let me talk with the mayor. A lovely day, isn't it? Hello, hello. How are you enjoying the Harvest Festival this year? Have you found time to head over to Wismead for the new activities there? 
I understand Wallerick Goldworthy has really outdone himself and that there are many fun games to play and delicious treats to enjoy. I was about to make my way there to sample some of the offerings myself, but I will of course take the time to help you with whatever you need so long as you make it quick, Captain. A hobbit named Cleary. Is that used to as a first name or as a surname? Well, I can't say it makes a difference because neither case rings a bell. I have no memory of either. When did you say Cleary lived in the Shire? You didn't? If he is an old resident, it could be that some of his belongings may have ended up in the Matham house. You could ask Brombard if he has seen anything belonging to Cleary. Hmm. I have given more than enough thought to this matter, and it seems well settled to me. Sorry I could not be of more help, but I need to get going if I am to sample some of the food platters at Wistmead. Good day to you. Alright, to the Matham house we go. Cleary, eh? I don't think I know any of the hobbits by that name in the Shire, although it does sound familiar for some reason. It struck me as being from many years ago, perhaps when I was the keeper of the Matham house as a young hobbit. But that was long ago, and if I then saw Mathams labeled with the name Cleary, Cleary, they certainly have long since been disturbed or buried beneath more recent items. Cleary, Cleary, Cleary. No, I can't say I know anyone of that name. Perhaps you could check with the postmaster. His occupation requires that he has thorough knowledge of the hobbit names and addresses, and if anyone knows a Cleary in the Shire, he is just a hobbit who will do so. Postmaster Proudfoot can usually be found outside the Quick Post, right near the town hall. I guess that is a good person to ask. If he's delivering mail, he should know all the names in the Shire. You are looking for a Cleary? There I hope that you seek word with House and Cleary. This is an unexpected joy, Kippen. At last, I thought this day would never come, and I would and I'll go to my grave with this task unfulfilled. One more disappointer in a long line of shamed postmasters. But it is not to be. The mail shall be at last delivered. When I first came to work delivering mail, when I was just a young hobbit, old Ned Harfoot, the postmaster, showed me the ropes. It took me a few weeks to learn the ins and outs of the quick post, and I never forgot his lessons. One day he took me down to the basement and showed me a box of old envelopes. These letters ain't ever been delivered, Hugo, he said to me. But my old boss told me we weren't to throw them away. Could be one day we'll find out how to deliver them, and when that day comes the Quick Post will truly have earned a fine reputation, even if it puts that lie to its name. Well, Ned passed on not long after that, and I took a vow to keep the undelivered letters safe until my own time was up, or the intended recipient came to claim them. It seems to me that you might be the closest person we're likely to get to House and Cleary, Kippen. If you are willing to follow me, I will show you these stacks of undelivered letter and you can decide what to do with them. Let me know. Follow me, Kippen. I can hardly believe that someone has come in search of these letters after all this time. So it looks like that Mr. Cleary had some letters addressed to him that were never delivered long, long ago. Sweet. We're at the post office. Alright. Alright, I have emptied the box of old letters onto the table in the basement. You are welcome to look through them to see if there's anything important. Now remember, this is highly unusual. We at the Quick Post do not advocate looking through people's mail. But these letters are so old, there should be no harm in it. This way, Kippen, this way. Mind the steps, they can be treacherous if you're not used to them. Apologies for the mess. We are more organized than we seem, I can assure you. Alright, the letters are there for you. I will return in a few minutes. Alright, so let's read this letter here. Dear Mr. Cleary, I hope I am not intruding, but I wish to write you this note of thanks. I had a delightful visit with you, and I'm ready 
looking forward to ours of next week. As I promised, I will bring some fresh produce from my father's garden. You will not believe the crunch of our carrots. They are truly something. When next I visit, I will help you clean the weeds out of your own garden. I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I find gardening to be very rewarding. Very sincerely yours, Ivy Redsmith. It's an unusual last name for a hobbit. Let's read another letter. Dear Mr. Cleary, Thank you once again for another lovely visit. I hope you don't feel too badly about what your neighbors have been saying. They seem a poor lot, mean-spirited and unwelcoming. Pay no heed to their insults, and I will not either. Looking forward to our next visit. Ivy Redsmith. Dear Mr. Cleary, This winter has been very bad, hasn't it? I'm sorry to tell you that the weather must keep me at home. I cannot visit this week. But I promise to bring some soap and towels with me when next I visit. I will scrub away the mean things your neighbors wrote on your fence in no time. Warmer guards, even in the cold. Ivy Redsmith. So maybe they were writing things on his signs. Maybe it was one of these neighbors that wrote the eerie thing on the signpost. Who knows? Dear Mr. Cleary, Has it already been two months? I cannot believe it, but I know it is so. I have never seen snow like this. It began as a winter's lark, but now... I'm sorry I have not been able to visit. There's no sign of the weather's improvement, and my family's worries deepen me every day. I promise I will see you as soon as winter ends. Waiting to see the sun again. Ivy Redsmith. Dear Mr. Cleary, They say this terrible winter might soon be done, though they have said this before. I hope this time they are right, for it has taken a toll on my family and on my friends. Our food is nearly gone. They say it will be a time of famine unless something can be done. Do not think I am being forward, but I am worried for you, Halson. Your home was in no state to weather such a winter as we have had. I hope your neighbors at last showed some kindness. Could they have given you shelter, shared their food, and found warmth in their, hearth, in their hearts for you? I hope they have. They would be cruel hobbits indeed if they have not. Are my letters being delivered? I have not heard word from you for more than a year, Halson. 
You could not possibly have stayed in your home this whole time. Could you? Worried, hungry, and afraid for you. Your dear friend, Ivy Redsmith. You fold up the last of the letters and return it to its envelope. So how did it go? What did you find out from those letters, Kippen? Did you learn anything of use? You briefly describe some of what Ivy Redsmith wrote to House and Cleary, and as your tale progresses, Hugo's eyebrows furrow as he strokes his chin deep in thought. These letters are indeed very old. It seems to me that Ivy and Halson lived during the time of the long winter which gripped the Shire more than 250 years ago. That winter was the longest ever recorded, and it was followed by the Days of Dearth, a period of famine and unhappiness the like of which has never been seen again. It is said that many hobbits died during that winter and that food shortage that followed. I hope that fate did not befall Ivy or Halson, but if there are no further letters, it seems likely that they came to sad ends. I wonder why these letters were never delivered. The hobbits of the Quick Post must have had their hands full trying to survive the long winter, but still I would have expected them to make an effort, or at least it became clear that the winter was worse than usual. It does strike me as somewhat odd that these letters predate the snows were not delivered. Have we gotten to the bottom of the mystery? It seems to me that we have only uncovered more questions. It's been a foul day, it has. It is highly unusual for letters such as these to not have been delivered, Kippen. We run a respectable post around here, and I would have said we always have done. But those undelivered letters seem to cast a doubt on it. To my shame and that of my predecessors. Why would those letters not be delivered? At any rate, we do not keep records of home ownership in the Quick Post, but there is a small chance that someone might know the state of the Cleary farmhouse, even if knowledge of its one-time resident has long been lost during the ensuing years. That was long ago. I speak of Clem Underhill, the escrow broker in Mickle Delving. He may know of the deed to the Cleary farmhouse if it ever changed hands, and if the land was ever sold, he might tell you the name of the current owner if there is one. Alright. There's the broker. What do you need? The Cleary farmhouse, you say? Oh, that goes back quite a long way, almost 300 years if I remember all right. The records from those days are rather incomplete, but there is a deed of a parcel of land in that name. It's a wooded lot, yes? I have had no cause to go out there, but the description makes it sound quite deep in the forest, near Wallerick's Goldworthy new, new, new cleared field of Wismead, isn't it? Sorry. This is an interesting coincidence, since the field has only recently been put up to use after being left alone for so long. There have been no transactions relating to the parcel, so I expect it to be owned by Cleary once Once then, it must have been owned by Cleary still. A descendant surely, although that is a long time for anyone to stay in one place without interacting with his neighbors. That is no way to live, not for any respectable hobbit. It must do you some harm, surely, to see only the faces of your family and no others. And if you live by yourself, with no kin around you, why imagine it? And who would take you, take care of you in your twilight years? Until finally your last day arrives and you meet it alone? Clem shivers suddenly. Mayhaps it is just the time of the year, but thinking about this sends a chill down my spine and raises the hairs on my feet. It sounds like a spooky harvest festival story to me, and not something that could happen to real life folk in the Shire. I cannot say as I like it, Kippen. I hope I was able to help you for now. I would like to think no more of these troubling thoughts. Okay, so now I need to speak with Bingo once again. And I think I can just take a pony back there from the stable. Isn't there usually a pony that takes it to the festival grounds over here? I thought there was. Good day. Maybe not. Alright. I will just fast forward my way over there then.
Okay, here we go. At last, you have come back, Kippen. Fosco yelled at me again, and this time he had the support of several of his brothers. This is so unlike them. What did you learn in Mickle Delving? Did you find anything about Cleary Acres? Or about the curse? You explained to Bingo what you learned about House and Cleary and the parcel of land he once owned not far from Wismead, and the Hobbit nods. It all makes sense to me now. The spectral vision saw you saw in Binbo Wood must be related in some way to House and Cleary, and somehow he managed to put a curse on the Shire. None but one will laugh when all is done. That must refer to the ghost of House and Cleary, scorned and forgotten by his neighbors. In fact, that may very well be why the Boffin boys are so uncharacteristically angry. The ghostly haunt has affected them without their knowledge, and the close proximity of Wismead to the Cleary farm has inflamed their tempers. Are you up for another adventure, Kippen? I have the perfect hobbit in mind to go with you. If there's a specter haunting the Cleary farmhouse, you need to be prepared to weather some frightening apparitions, Kippen. Who better to take with you than my cousin Denotis? He is not frightened of anything, and will be best suited to adventure with you through the misty forest in the eerie acres. No matter what haunt, what the haunt brings, he would disbelieve a ghost right to its face, and I think his clear head might be the secret to dispelling the curse. I will not have another word about it. Find Denotis by the fire here in Wismead, and I look forward to your successful return. That's actually hilarious, because if you remember from the last episode, Denotis really just acts like he's not scared, but inside, he's basically dying of fright. Poor Denotis. What's going on, Kippen? Why do you have that look on your face? You explain Bingo's idea that a ghost is responsible for the haunting of Wismead, and that he wants you and Denotis to travel through the woods of the Cleary Farm to dispel the curse. The notice laughs, but then his smile drains away. You're serious? Oh no, Kippen. Is there no way to get out of this? I shared my secret to you in confidence. I do not fear nothing, I fear everything. But if I tell Cousin Bingo the truth, he will know my secret and I will be revealed as a liar. But if I do not tell him, I will have to brave the spooky forest and risk the ghostly curse. This is terrible. There is nothing for it, I suppose. The path is foggy, so you should pick up this torch and use it to light your way. I'll be right behind you, but I'm not happy about it, not at all. All right, let me grab this torch here. All right, and I guess I'm going this way. This is the Dauntwood. And again, it's just an instance by itself. This was a bad idea and I regret it already. Let's turn around and tell Bingo that we didn't find anything. What do you say, Kippen? I know he's depending on us, but he doesn't have all the information, does he? He thinks I don't believe in ghosts. And not only that, he thinks that this will be an advantage to us on this endeavor, but he's mistaken. Won't my belief in haunts, inspectors, and ghostly apparitions serve as an even worse disadvantage? Oh, Harum, fine. We can keep going, but I'm not happy about it. Not happy about it at all. I suppose we have to keep going, Kippen. The faster we move, the sooner we'll be done with this. Did you hear that? Oh, maybe it was just my imagination. Is that a farmhouse? Looks like no one has lived here for a long time. You better check it out, Kip, and I'll wait here. So we are at Eerie Acres and the farmhouse. The door is locked and barred and cannot be opened from this side. Door to the cellar appears to be unlocked. The forest encroaches upon the rear of the farmhouse. No one now rests upon the side of the porch, if anyone ever did. What did you find over here, Kippen? Oh, a cellar door. Brr. Well, the door of the cellar is locked, so I guess we'd better turn around and go back home. What's that? The door is unlocked. Oh dear, oh dear. There could be anything lurking down there, Kippen. Do we really have to go down there? Alright, here we go. Pretty creaky and spooky down here, I'll say. 
Oh no, I don't like this. Oh no, what is this? Can it be? Is it green eyes from the scary stories? He is gone, thank goodness. And now we should go too. Onward, I guess. I hope that is the last frightening thing that we should see. Oh, now do you hear that? Longo Proudfoot trapped in his larder. What a terrible fate. This is really cool. These are all the stories we read by the campfire. Will that happen to us, Kippen? Will we be trapped in here forever? Oh, dearie me. We cannot think that way, but we must push ahead anyway. I'm glad I read all the stories in the campfire in the last episode instead of just a couple of them. That way, this all makes much more sense. I don't like this one bit, Kippen. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Oh no, what's this? These fish, they're not really here, are they? This reminds me of that scary story, the one with Odo Grub. It sends a shiver down my spine. It is gone, just like the others. Let us keep going, Kippen. What new horrors await for us ahead? What the manner of cellar is this? It is unlike any I've seen. I feel eyes upon Kippens. Eyes! Right here! Well, go on then, spirit. Let us see what terrible vision you have for us. Nothing, eh? Ha. Huh. I think we may be through the worst of it, Kippen. That's the Hobbit from the Scarecrow story, if you remember. This house must have already run out of fright for us. Ha! Huh. I charge forward with newfound courage. Hmm, another door. After you, Kippen. There's the well from the other story as well. Stairs? Ah, uh, you can go ahead, Kippen. I will catch my breath and meet you at the top. Really? You want to get separated in this spooky house? Are you kidding me? That's how people get murdered. There's something peculiar about these stairs. Is that Minas Tirith? That is Minas Tirith. I haven't been there yet in the game, but I can recognize it, I suppose. Just making sure I'm not missing anything. I'm taking my time. I am now in the haunted farmhouse. It's a pretty sweet painting. Look at that. There's something most peculiar about these stairs. Pretty creepy. Kind of reminds me of the forest temple in Zelda Ocarina of Time. The twisted hallways. Door is locked. There is the notice. Finally, I have to say, Kippen, I'm not sure how all these stairs fit inside this farmhouse. It looked quite a bit smaller on the outside, didn't it? A pox on ghosts and specters. Why can't things just be as they appear? I suppose we have to keep going. Maybe the next trip will, trick will be that spooky building is actually not as scary or as haunted as it appears. Here's to hoping. Alright, let's go inside. Ooh, I don't like this, Kippen. A sudden gust of wind. My torch went out.
Hello? Are you awake, sir? Oh dear, I think this fellow is dead. I'd agree. Is this... is this House and Cleary? Who has disturbed my vigil? Oh my! Are you... are you the ghost of House and Cleary? Shunned by my neighbors. Left alone. Left to die. The time has come to levy my curse upon them. Stop right there. Reinforcements have arrived. The whole brood of boffins. I did some thinking, Kippen, and I decided that I could not let you and young Denotis face this danger alone. So I set my misgivings aside and prepared to follow the two of you. And don't you know it, but my other cousins had much the same idea. Something about the spirit story strikes me as quite suspicious, and I think we should get to the bottom of it, and at once. I don't believe you are House and Cleary at all. I have read a number of scary stories to celebrate the season. And that is simply not how otherworldly spirits behave. No, you were something else. You are well read for one of the hole dwellers. I think you will find us quite a surprising folk. I am Skulking Ire, and I speak for he who no longer can. House and Cleary died years ago, hated by his neighbors. They called him eerie and off-putting and strange. They mocked him, they insulted him. His rage and his hate drew me here. He died in this very chair, and no one wept for him. You are wrong, spirits. You say House and Cleary had no friends? I have proof that says otherwise. <gasps> Kippen, catch! Bingo tosses you a satchel of envelopes to you, and you grab it from the air. Dear Mr. Cleary, I hope I'm not intruding, but I wish to write this you note of thanks. So, we already read all these notes, so I'm not going to reread each and all of them. But obviously, these are all the letters from Ivy Redsmith. No, no, stop this nonsense at once. Enough. The long winter had been like none the Shard had ever seen. Hobbits died of hunger and cold even among their friends and their families. Ivy Redsmith wanted to help House and Cleary, but the winter prevented it. This changes nothing. House and Cleary was hated by his neighbors. They whispered cruel things about him and they let him die. His rage drew me here. Yes, you said.
I have been thinking about that. There are places in this world where evil spirits dwell. Mary Gold has told me quite a lot about some of them. I have such spirits make the land more like themselves, just by being there. You strike me as a barrowed down sort of chap. So? I think you left the barrow downs and settled here at Cleary's Acres. But I think you came here before you say you did. What does it matter, Hold Dweller? It matters. It matters because I think it was your presence that caused Halson's neighbors to dislike him. I say it was not. What did you say your name was? The Skulking Iyer? You're more like a skulking liar. You tell him, Dino. That's the way, Dino. Oh my, that was a good one. That'll teach him and no mistake. Are you not afraid of me? I'm not? I'm not. You arrived at Halson's neighbors and Halson's neighbors felt uneasy. They knew something was not quite right about Cleary's Acres. But they did not know what it was. It was you. It was you the whole time. This does not change anything, House and Cleary died. He died alone, with only me for his company. He did, knowing this won't bring him back. But if I could tell him that he was missed, I would. I would tell him that even when he felt most alone, there were still hobbits who cared. Stay back. Did Halson think you were afraid? You were a friend, sorry. Did he suspect you were to blame for his solitude? Leave me be. No, I think you are the one who needs to leave. Hobbits won't fall for your tricks any longer. And take your curse with you. Bah. You can't frighten us. A job well done. Yes. And don't come back. Ha ha. The skulking ire is defeated, Kippen. He won't be bothering us anymore. Not if he knows what's good for him. Now that he is gone, I expect hobbits of Wistmead will no longer feel the effect of his presence. It is not soon enough, if you ask me, but better late than not at all. I wish we could have done more to help House and Cleary. His is a sad story, and while I am glad to have at last put an end to the villainy of the skulking ire, we are much too late to help poor departed Mr. Cleary. Better late than never, did I say. It is hard to be later than this, 200 years gone, but still I hope he finds some rest in it. I should like to make arrangements to bury him. I shall inquire with the mayor and perhaps the quick post can be made to foot the bill. Had they delivered Ivy Redsmith's letter, some measure of pain might have been avoided. No, I will not judge the postmaster's long gone. The, skulki the skulking ire had a hand in the, de in the dereliction of their duties. I think House and Cleary should like to be buried in his garden. We will set Ivy's letters with him, and may he find peace at last with the memory of her. Did you see that, Kippen? Skulking liar, I called him. Oh, if only Celandine had been here to see my incredible bravery and courage. You'll tell her, won't you? It's funny, I was frightened when we came to the forest, and then again when we arrived at the spooky farmhouse hidden within. I was beside myself with terror when you told me that the door to the cellar was unlocked, and each new vision we beheld as we made our way through the Cleary farmhouse increased my horror tenfold. 
But then it came right down to it when we confronted the specter and many of my brothers and sisters were beside me, well things didn't seem quite so scary anymore. How very strange. Even so, I look around me now and the spookiness begins to creep back and I tell you that I'm ready to go. Yes, let's leave while we still have the opportunity, Kippen. Brr, what's the hold up? Well, this has been a harvest festival to remember, Kippen, and no mistake. I am glad we managed to dispel the curse and send Skulking Ire packing. I wish House and Cleary could know what we did for him, but of course that is impossible. Perhaps it is enough that we remember this one thing, easy enough as it is to forget. We should strive to be kind to our neighbors in every season. Hey, presto, it just occurred to me that some of the spookiest story I can think of come from our failure to do that, this one included. The curse of the Eerie Acres has been dispelled, and now we can safely enjoy the Harvest Festival without fear. Or perhaps with just the right amount of fear, if you know what I mean. Hobbit-sized spooks and scares are more to my liking, and to that of my cousins, I think. Thank you for all your help, Kippen. Now I believe I will turn my attention from investigating ancient curses to another matter. Looking into the spider pies everyone is talking about. Sweet. So that completes... The Curse of the Eerie Acres. And this one had a lot of closure to it, unlike last year, so I'm not sure if they're going to bring a part 3 to this next year. But either way, this felt very satisfying and conclusive. I hope you guys enjoyed as well. In the next episode, I'm going to do some of the regular Harvest Festival content, including all the new quests here at Wistmead. So I hope you'll join me for that, and I'll see you next time.